Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Coyote Car Channel. On today's episode, I'm going to show you what kind of tools the mechanics use. Even though I'm just a novice and I don't actually work in a shop or anything like that, I use pretty much the same tools that are used in any mechanic shop. So stay tuned and I'll show you everything I use. So a lot of these things I plan on making in-depth videos on, so I'll barely touch on some of them, like the engine start stand. I've already made a video on the engine stand and the engine crane. There will be some other things throughout the video that I'm going to point out, and I'm just probably just going to touch base on them and explain what they do, um, but not go into a whole lot of depth on it. And then I'll come back and make another video completely dedicated to explaining exactly how to use that item and the intricacies of that. So um, the first thing I'm going to show you is something that my uh, grandpa gave me. And what exactly this is, um, is a Craftsman 200 piece set. And the reason why I'm pointing this out first is because this is something that can get you started if you don't have any tools. Um, I think they range um, a couple hundred dollars to $150, somewhere around there. Um, you can pick these up at Sears. Um, and they're, they're just a great set. So basically what is in here, is you have every socket that you could ever use. Um, you've got deep well sockets, you've got 12 point sockets, you've got six point sockets. And the difference between a six point and a 12 point, six points have six and 12 points have 12 edges on the inside to grip on. And yes, that is important because there are some things that you absolutely have to use a 12 a 12 side socket on um, otherwise you will rip the threads and um, strip it. Also this comes with a 3 8 ratchet and a 1 half inch half inch ratchet. Also it comes with um, some open end box end wrenches um, not a lot so that's where you know you might want to actually invest in a set like this um, and a bunch of your smaller sizes here um, on both sides, and you've got impact bits as well. They're just made out of a tougher steel. And so that pretty much covers this. And like I said, the reason why I think this is very important is because this is something that you can start out with. You know, it's you already have a full set now. All you need is some screwdrivers and a couple other tools, and you can basically work on pretty much anything in your garage. Pretty much. It also comes with a set of hex key set, and um, those are metric and SAE standard size. So um, that's why I said I think this is a great product. I drew some arrows on here because if you open this thing upside down, it will spill out everywhere. So that's that. The next thing I'm going to point your attention to, and these are not in order as far as greatest to worst tools. Um, other than the first one, I feel like that one's a really important one. If you don't have any tools, get you going. Um, this next one, after saying that, is um, just a small parts bin. So I've got all of my uh, bolts and nuts in here, and um, period. So I've got half inch, nine sixteenths, five sixteenths, quarter inch, three sixteenths, going on down to miscellaneous and washers. So this is my next one. It's something really easy you can build. If you guys want to see me build one of these, I can show you how to do that. It's really simple and it also helps you kind of learn the different size bolts and nuts that are available to you. As far as American goes, you can also make one for metric sizes if you want, but those are a lot easier to learn. Metric sizes go, you know, one, two, three, four, five millimeter on up. So there you go. This next tool is completely optional, but it is a shop vac. I like to do a lot of woodworking as well as doing mechanic work, so a lot of people will tell you that that's not something that you should probably do in the same shop, but I have never had any issues with it because I keep pretty clean. Um, so then I just ran it up right there so I can remove it from here and vacuum up whatever I need. And this can actually pull out from the wall as well. And I've got a trash can sitting right next to it under my bench vise which I use to hold stuff down. That way if I have to drill anything out and it has any metal shavings or anything like that, they'll fall right into the trash bin. 
The next item on my list is a radio. This is very, very important. If you're going to be doing anything out in your garage, you want some kind of music or sound going in the background, otherwise you will go absolutely crazy. Now I make shift my own out of this radio and some wood I had laying around and a speaker that was laying in the back of my dart when I bought it. So that's a good thing to have, even if you have a little boom box, you can plug into wall, batteries get expensive. So that is my next one on the list. And the next set of items on my list are more of a safety thing um, that you might wanna keep an eye on and it's good to have. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a wife who is practicing to be a nurse. So I always have a set of gloves around to keep myself safe and my hands clean. Um, she doesn't like me getting dirt on the doors or anything like that, so um, it's good to have that around. Also, cheap Ziploc baggies are a must. If you are taking anything apart, you can throw a little bit of permanent marker on there and you are good to go. You will remember where that goes as long as you took pictures and are good. Um, also, I've got an array of different safety glasses down here and all different types of tape from electrical to masking tape and as for ear protection and dust protection i've got some little dust masks and some ear protection up there also these lint-free paper towels up here are a great thing to have in the shop the regular ones will get dust all over everything and you don't really want that when you're dealing with an engine and you're not wanting little particles of paper inside of your engines so also down below there you can see I've got some some oil funnels and a real respirator mask as well as my square and compasses. The next thing I recommend having in your arsenal of tools is a compressor. I do plan very soon to be upgrading this Harbor Freight air compressor. It has done me well for what I needed to do it for but there were some things that I wasn't able to do. I was not able to run air tools that I wanted to, say a sander or a grinder or a air drill or anything like that. I mean, this was basically for blowing out the garage. I did get the car painted, but it didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it to. So I will be upgrading that in the near future. This next tool is something that I will be doing a future video on how to use it properly and effectively, but it is a 20 ton hydraulic press and it comes in very very big help when you're needing to press ball joints or press pretty much anything for that matter it is a great tool to have in the shop but it's not something you need right away I don't exactly suggest you go out and purchase one of these right when you're first getting your first set of tools to start working on cars so keep an eye out for this video coming up in the near future and of course we have the engine hoist if you have not yet. I will put a link in the description for you to go ahead and check out the video in regards to how to operate an engine hoist properly. And if you haven't already, this is a great time for me to let you know to go ahead and hit that subscribe and bell icon so that way you can stay up to date with all of my newest content. I upload videos, I try to, twice a week so you can catch me then. Okay, and I apologize for the mess here, but I'm just going to go over, you know, basically what we've got here um, just one by one. So I've got a cheap and expensive welder right here. I've got some scrap metal down here, a uh, small parts bin, which I'll open up for you in a minute. I've got an array of penetrance, oils, um, Goo Gone, uh, mass airflow cleaner, PV blaster, throttle body, air intake cleaner, just a bunch of stuff that I've accumulated over the years I haven't completely used. Um, a couple of buckets and then an oil drain. Okay, and then to kind of give you a peek inside of the small parts bin, I've got just, like I said, it's just kind of like the other stuff, just stuff I've randomly accumulated. It looks like I've got some zip ties here. Uh, microfiber cloth, um, some rubber hose that could be used for gas line if I needed, um, some cable ties, um, some end rings for wire, um, some putty knives, um, all sorts of stuff, Velcro, F-Cons, some Dacron, which is bowstring, a white paint marker, um, some LEDs, these are kind of neat. 
they're already wired up so that way you can just hook them in directly into your car because they've got the little resistor in there already. Those are kind of neat. Um, and then underneath I've got some more stuff that, you know, just kind of accumulated some more uh, rope and uh, some more hose, some shrink wrap. I've got some uh, fuses in here for my old car. I've got a hot glue gun, a scale, some smaller hose, and it's just basically just somewhere I can keep, you know, just some stuff that I've accumulated over the years that I might need that I'm probably going to need in the future. And it's just kind of helpful to keep one of those around. So. Okay, and so I'm going to be going over all the tools I have in my toolbox now. I'm going from left to right, so I'll have to pan over once I get there. So I've got um, two sets of screwdrivers. Um, these ones are nice because they have the metal running all the way through, and they've really lasted a long time. And then I've got the smaller set to get into tighter reach areas. And then I've got a ratcheting one, which was nice. I needed to buy that for a certain thing that I was trying to get at, but I couldn't quite reach it. And then I've got some surgical scissors. You can pick these up pretty cheap on eBay or Amazon. Those are nice to have. Some air tools. I've got a tire pressure gauge. I've got um, a tire pressure filler and then just a regular blow nozzle. And then I've got a quarter inch deep well socket set uh, with a nice long extension. I've got a half inch set um, of metric and American size as well as a 3 8 drive. And these are great because they actually come with, um, mine broke down at the bottom, but they come with the uh, adapter to go onto your drill and uh, both sets have that. And then um, this one actually goes down to a quarter from three eighths and it, it's kind of nice. It slips on there and then you can use the quarter inch drive ones. And then um, up here I've got some uh, bigger sockets that I use for things, uh, crank pulleys and stuff like that. Just basically specialty stuff that I only have to use ever so often. So, And um, I've also got an uh, exacto knife and some razor blades up here, uh, a file, and then a nice um, straight edge, as well as a rat tail file, and some more razor blades. Another thing that's really nice to have and helpful around the shop is a, a drill, uh, impact, or brushless are great to have around the shop. And um, they've gotten me through a lot. This one right here has made it about three years of me beating on it almost every other day, if not every day. So this is a great thing to get. Um, I went with Rigid. Uh, I think that, you know, they're for the most part, they're pretty good tools. There's some that aren't as good as others, but I've enjoyed most of them that I've had. Okay, and then moving on over to um, the right side of the top drawer, um, we've got some of these uh, geared wrenches that my uh, grandpa gave me. That one seems to be kind of seized up a little bit. I'll have to take a look at that one a little closer. But that one works. And those are nice because if you're in a tight spot, you can get in there and then kind of ratchet around it. Anyways, um, and then I've just got a bunch of box end wrenches. These are all metric sized um, and they've been pretty helpful. And then uh, these are for hoses or uh, line fittings. And these are really nice to uh, get around and get those line nuts off um, for like brake lines or fuel lines or something of that nature. And so those are really helpful to use. And then uh, at Harbor Freight, I picked up a set of crowbars. Um, there's a bunch of them that come with it. So those are kind of nice to have. Um, you always end up having to price something if you're gonna work on cars, unfortunately. Um, and then this is a post reamer. And uh, you can cr clean out the posts on your battery terminals. And you can put this onto, this piece goes on and in. I don't know if, eh, it's not gonna show very well. But you slide this over the top of the terminal and you twist it around and it cleans it right up. And you can pick those up at like Walmart or wherever. Um, also, it's always nice to have a catch magnet. 
And um, well, let's move on down to the next level. Okay, so I'm just gonna go one drawer at a time so I can kind of explain everything to you. Um, I've got it mostly organized out here. So um, I use this for mostly, let me readjust a little, sorry about that. Mostly my uh, cutting tools for the most part. I've got a heavy set of uh, lineman's pliers right here, or dikes, if you wanna call them that. Uh, another set of dikes. Um, this is an electrician's crimping tool. Um, some needle nose pliers directly next to it right here. Um, these are some wire cutters. Um, these are kind of neat. Um, they don't really work exactly like I would like them to. Maybe I just don't know how to tune them just right. But uh, you put the wire in here and then you close down on it. And it actually right here cuts the wire and pulls it apart and strips it for you. So those are kind of nice. And then uh, these are really helpful. So this is a set of um, uh, ring ring pliers, snap ring pliers, and uh, those are really nice um, to remove those and they come with a bunch of different types of heads depending on what you're trying to do and you can actually change these around so that way they can go inwards and open that way or open this way. And I used to work for a cable company so I've got some uh, crimpers and cutters for coaxial cable. Moving down to the next one. Um, this is more of uh, just like crescent wrenches and some um, pliers here. And then these are all um, to go down from sizes, um, socket sizes. And so these are all the different sizes here. You can got uh, one inch right here. So that goes down from half inch, half inch to one inch socket if you had one. So kind of a nice little set if you ever get in a pinch. Now I've got a bunch of extensions right here. Um, I've got star keys. I've got Allen keys of American and metric. Um, some pipe wrenches right here. And then I've got a set of vice grips, which those vice grips are really nice to have. Um, I would recommend that to anybody that's actually starting out to uh, buy some tools. I'm going to move you over just a little bit more. So this is more of like uh, my specialty drawer. Let me scoot it out just a little. And in here, um, I've got everything from reverse thread um, drill bits to um, dial bore indicator gauges, which I'll show these in another video, to the cat claw you saw in the door panel video, to a set of punches. Um, is a set of tap and, and dies, taps and dies, and these are for cutting threads either on the bolt or down into the cavity itself. And this is an AC pump pulley holder, and it's so you can put these little notches in and then loosen the bolt and hold this so it doesn't spin. Um, a hose cutter. For cutting like PVC pipe. Um, if you watched my video on how to clean out piston rings uh, grooves, you'd remember this tool because that's what that is. Um, this is for charging in air, uh, an air conditioning. This is for bending like um, brake brake hose. This is a specialty tool for removing valves out of a Briggs and Stratton. 11 horsepower. Uh, if you watch that video, here's a ring install tool. Um, this is for removing the um, top of a 97 Ram to 90 something uh, Dodge uh, fuel tank. And then you've got your ring compressor tool, which I'll do another video on that. Should probably leave that out. And then here's your um, other dial indicator. So those are nice. I'll do another video on that too. And then an oil installer tool. And then a, um, a ball joint pusher to pop a ball joint out of place. Some uh, grinding tools. Got 
There's a digital caliper in here. These are really nice to have too. Um, if you don't know what size something is, uh, this will tell you what it is. So that's a really good thing to have around. It's really handy. Um, I also have a set of punches in here. Um, and you can punch whatever letters you want to punch your name onto an engine block. You can punch your name onto an engine block. And that's pretty much it other than um, a spark plug gap set. And then in this drawer, I've got a level. Like I said, I like to do some woodwork. So I've got some different um, squares in here for making different lines. Um, I've got a squeegee for installing um, window tent. Um, some wood cutting drill bits in here. I've got some pick tools. Pick tools are always really helpful. I've got a square, a hammer, and then these are Allen keys that are really long and they can actually fit into a 3 8 drive. So those are kind of nice to have, you know, I needed them for something. I've ended up using them down the road a couple more times. And then in the final drawer, this is just kind of more of the bulkier stuff. So I've got my square, a hammer, a saw, another hammer, a set of channel locks. Um, this is for installing um, cam bearings into Chevy engines. And then I've made up my own little file for um, filing down steel. This is a ball joint separator or a pickle fork. And then my torque wrench. And so the uh, last couple of things that I would recommend um, if you're wanting to start uh, working on your own cars or working on a car for that matter is to uh, invest in a creeper and a rolling chair that kind of rolls around to get you at eye level with the vehicle. Those are really nice to have. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the episode and tune in next week. Um, we'll have something good going for you. And um, remember to subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to like the video or dislike it if you didn't like it. Okay, see you next time.